Are you tired of wrestling with your PT or your patient when doing your strength testing after a lower body injury? Does that even actually work? Yeah, no, it doesn't. Luckily, we're here to tell you that there is a different way. Ready to find out? Join us and let's put your knee to the test, but not any old test, the Tindec test. Hey Free Habbers, Dr. Adele Smenner here and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going over the ultimate strength test with our handy dandy tin deck. But before we get into that, let's go over and review maybe some more of the traditional methods that we have used for strength testing in the past. So more often than not, that looks like something called a manual muscle test, meaning that you're gonna be sitting at the edge of the table looking something like this. Your PT or your trainer is gonna come up, you're gonna be asked to hold your leg out and they're gonna push against your leg with their arm. So essentially what we're doing is matching up the strength of your quad with your, with your PT's arm. So if you really think about it, that's not really a fair matchup, right? More likely than not, your leg is going to win, obviously, unless you're like post-operative or something like that. But when you get into the later stages of rehab, meaning return a sport after an ACL or maybe a hamstring strain, you're getting back to running, your leg is probably going to win and should be winning against that person's arm no matter what. So really, you're always going to look strong, but you don't actually know if you're strong enough, right? So that's where we're getting objective data with something like this. So usually it's uh, called dynamometer is going to be really, really helpful in making sure you're getting back to the things you love safely based on the data and research out there rather than just playing this arbitrary guessing game. In order to use the Tindex specifically, we need a couple pieces of equipment. This you can get online specifically on our website. We also have a discount code for it. So shout out to that. A carabiner, get that anywhere. We use a moving strap in our setup, but you can also use like chains or something like that as well as an ankle strap. So. Essentially, the Tindec was originally developed for uh, mountain climbers, but it has, based on how it's set up, it's actually been proven and used for non-climbing activities, training, and testing, meaning that research has says we can actually use it for testing quads and hamstrings in the clinic, which is great because traditionally, like a real dynamometer test requires a fancy piece of equipment that's $10,000 or more and also huge. So it isn't really clinically feasible. So alternatives like this make it so we can stop playing this kind of guessing game in the clinic and make sure we're doing things safely in the right way. So the Tindec, the way it works, it's essentially a Bluetooth tensile load sensor. I mean, there's a little chip in here that's gonna tell us exactly how many pounds or kilograms of pressure you're gonna be able to produce. So we'll go over that setup in a little bit. What that allows us to test is muscle endurance as well as peak output and rate of force development. So three really valuable pieces of information, but today we're gonna to be focusing more so on that peak output, meaning how many pounds of pressure or kilograms you can put out. The other part of that is knowing, is this test actually reliable and is it valid? So we know research has come out already saying that yes, it is valid, specifically on the tin deck itself, which is awesome, right? The next part is reliability, right? So that means, is the test actually testing it on a consistent basis? Meaning if you're testing on day one, day 10, three months, six months, or a year down the line, are you actually getting data and numbers that are gonna allow you to track progress over time? That's where that setup comes in and that's what we're gonna be going over today. Again, we're gonna be going over quads and hamstrings, so if you've been recovering from an ACL injury, meniscus, a total knee, a hamstring strain, listen up because we're about to put your knee to the ultimate test, the tin deck test. All right, prehabbers, are you ready for the ultimate tin deck test? All right, so first setup is going to be quads at 60. We're also going to be going over quads at 90 degrees hamstrings at 60 degrees and hamstrings at 90 degrees. However, our first and most important thing is our reliability that we already talked about, right? So we know the Tindec is already valid based on the research, but our setup is going to be what dictates whether uh, your testing is going to be reliable between sessions. So what you're gonna notice is for our setup today, we have our uh, mobilization strap to help anchor his legs to our box here. His ankle strap here, the Tindec, the carabiner, and the moving strap. You're also going to notice that we have another carabiner to allow that anchor to our squat rack here. So getting a really low anchor point is gonna be really important for if you're wanting to be testing at 60 degrees of knee flexion. Again, 60 degrees isn't always going to be feasible if you don't have a really low anchor point like this, but most normative data out there for isokinetic testing is at 60 degrees, so that's what we tried to emulate here. But again, if you don't have that angle set up available, we're gonna show you how to do it at 90 degrees as well. So let's say we got this all set up. I'm checking, making sure everything's at the right angle. I'm looking for a 90 degree angle, ideally where the tin deck meets the tibial shaft. So right here, looking for a 90 degrees. 
And then from here, I'm actually going to measure his knee angle to make sure he's at that 60 degree mark. So rather than getting out my goniometer, because that takes a lot of time and it's inconvenient, I'm going to use the level app on my iPhone. So what you wanna do here, take your level app and you're just gonna put it along the tibial shaft. So depending on where you're leveling from, so if you're leveling from perpendicular, this should come out to 30 degrees. Kick out a little bit, Michael. Or as close to 30 degrees as possible. So I'm gonna give him a little bit more. Go ahead again. Perfect, right up closer, kick out more. All right, still need a little bit more. So again, it's kind of trial and error, but still better than a goni. Go ahead, kick. Kick, kick, kick. Okay, good, perfect. So he's around 29 degrees, which I'm okay with because once I get him kicking out at max effort, pretty confident it's gonna get to 30. So again, if you're going from here though, and you're leveling here, it should be 60 degrees. The other thing we always like to add in is a towel for comfort. If you're doing this on a regular treatment table, you might not need it, but I do find it gives better leverage at the knee as well. Lastly, we like to give our patients grips just because we have been told that subjectively this is not very comfortable. I got this side for you to grip onto. And again, if our goal is max effort, we wanna make sure they're as comfortable as possible. Before we go into our testing, what you're gonna notice too, kind of pretend you're doing your test, right? He's gonna end up slouching forward just because of our setup. And that is totally okay. For us, we are okay with that because again, we're using the same box every single time and that's what's gonna be most reliable for our setup. However, if your setup allows your person to be a little bit more upright, that is also fine. Just make a note of that as well. All right, so now our setup is good. We're gonna go ahead and go into the Tindec app. We're gonna go ahead and press this little black button here just to turn it on. So again, remember it uses a Bluetooth sensor, so very, very easy. You're gonna notice you have three options when you log into the app. Endurance, peak load, and rate of force, but as discussed, we are focusing on peak load today. So going to start there, clicking start test, We're gonna scan, easily picks it up, connecting, tearing it, make sure it's set at zero, lightly kick out for me, Michael, and you're gonna notice that that number starts to creep up on the phone. What I really like to do is use this for visual feedback for my clients to make sure that they can accurately assess if they're superseding or exceeding their previous trial. So what you're gonna notice when we start, we're gonna do three trials for each side, although we're only gonna do one on camera today, but ideally you're going three trials for each um, muscle group at each angle and giving your client or patient or whoever at least a minute and a half to two minutes of rest between each effort to make sure they're able to kick out maximally. Um, before we begin, also just a note, make sure your patients are warmed up before this. Kicking out at a max effort is not gonna be easy just right off the table. So usually we start with bike, some wall sits, some sort of isometric warm up, or even, you know, can go concentric, just moving and using the muscles that you're gonna be testing that day to make sure that they're primed and ready for that max effort kick. All right, Mike, are you ready for your max effort kick? All right, so getting him set up, I'm gonna give him three to five seconds to develop as much force as possible. So gonna give him a three second countdown. I'm gonna help stabilize this box and he's gonna get about five seconds to get this number as high as he can. All right, on count of three, two, and go, 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 and rest. Nice, crushed it, 170.2. So the reason we give those three to five seconds is to allow more time for maximal motor unit recruitment and muscle fiber activation, right? You're not gonna be able to tap into everything that first second. So those extra couple seconds are gonna be really key in getting that number as high as possible. All right, so that was 60 degrees. Let's go over that 90 degree setup for your quads next. All right, so we went over 60 degree setup for quads. Now let's go over the 90 degree setup. So this is going to be a little bit more feasible for like the average clinic because of just where the anchor point is. So you're gonna notice that the anchor point is a little bit higher. So if you don't have access to a squat rack or you do that just doesn't have these bottom, uh, bottom pegs, then this is gonna be really easy to set up. You can use a treatment table as well, like a high, low, or even a plinth table. And both of those are gonna work really, really well for this 90 degree setup. So to review, we're setting this up so that line of pull where it meets the tibia is also 90 degrees. So that looks like a good 90 degrees. Again, you can always use your level to check that. And we're also gonna level out, make sure, so go ahead, kick out lightly. He's right, perfect right around that zero degree mark, which means he's at a 90 degree knee angle. So you can be confident that we're at 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. The only difference here is going to be that again, that normative data might not apply at the 90 degree angle, but again, we're focused on reliability. So if this is what you're gonna be able to reproduce easily in the clinic, this is what you should be working on. All right, so let's come around. His 60 degree was his warm up. He's getting ready. All right, and we're just gonna demonstrate something. So go ahead and kick out for me, Mike. All right, so notice how that tipped back. 
right? Especially at this 90 degree angle, that's gonna be where your setup is gonna be really important for safety. So when you're here, make sure that you're anchoring down your plyo box, grab some 45, 50, however much weight that you think you're gonna need to offset this person. So again, make them feel safe and make sure that they feel like they can kick out as hard as they can. All right, so we know we're there. We're gonna get back to our tin deck app. Go ahead and kick out, let's make sure it's working. Perfect, good. All right, so I'm gonna give him that three second countdown. Again, we're only gonna do one trial, but in the real world, he would be doing three. And again, your job is to get them hyped up too, right? Let's ready, go. ready, three, two, and go, 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 oh. and rest, nice, 163.6. All right, so what you're gonna notice is this number is not going to be as high, and that is totally fine. It is not, you're gonna have a better activation and recruitment strategy at 60 degrees of knee flexion. So don't worry if that number at 90 is not as high as your 60 degree angle. Again, we're focused on reliability here. All right, that's it for quads. Let's move on to hamstrings. Okay, so we have crossed quads off the list. Now let's get into hamstrings. So hamstrings, yes, the backside of your leg. We are going to be starting at 60 degrees again. So what you're gonna notice that the peg and the anchor is a lot higher this time to allow for that 60 degree knee flexion and 90 degree angle here for that line of pull where the tindec meets the tibia. One thing that I did want to mention that we learned kind of a few months ago, which we found really helpful, was actually offsetting our anchor point to the left and right of the squat rack rather than going centered. By going centered, what you have to do is you have to move the box or where your patient is sitting every time. And again, that's gonna affect the reliability of the test. Here, all you have to do when switching sides is move the peg from the left to the right and the person never has to move. You never have to reset your anchor points or anything like that. And they can stay steady and you can uh, bet that it's gonna be reliable moving forward. So again, we have that 60 degree here, 90 degree here. This strap is gonna be super important when you get to hamstrings because if this isn't here, they're gonna drive their knee up and go into hip flexion every single time. So make sure that towel is there. Let's get his grips ready. And let's double check our angle. So again, we're going zero here, checking. He's pulling it right at that 30 degree mark, perfect. All right. When we go into these tests too, also think about the cues that you're using. Every person's gonna be a little bit different. Do they wanna pull? Do they wanna push? Drive your heel back. So play around with your cues as you move through your trials. All right, you ready for this one, Michael? Yep. We're going into hamstrings at 60 in three, two, and go. Pull, 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 And rest. So we're gonna do that one more time because I did not turn on the app. So ready? That was a good trial. <laughs> Round two, ready? Yep. Three. Two, and pull, 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 go, go, go. <sighs> nice. So again, this number is not going to be as high as your quads. Your hamstrings are gonna have a certain ratio that we're gonna expect, usually about two thirds of your quad strength. So, you know, we're not looking for a one to one ratio here. Again, two to three is the ideal. But again, that's just normative data. More importantly, you're gonna be comparing side to side. All right, let's cross that off. Let's move on to 90 degrees. Last but not least, we are testing our hamstrings at 90 degrees of knee flexion here. All right, so I'm going to warn you that 90 degrees is not gonna be a, the most optimal angle to be measuring your hamstring strength just because they're not gonna be able to activate all that well. But again, I'm gonna hone this in over and over again. Reliability is most important. So if this is the only angle that you can measure at, that's what you got. Because again, the most important thing is comparing that, uh, that strength and that measurement over time and compared to the other side. So before we go in, let's get that set up, the last little bit with the grips. I'll help this side. Perfect. And I always like to double check my angles. So again, checking that that's at 90, making sure here, perfect, right at that 90 degree angle. Switching over to my Tin Deck app, making sure it's connected. Sometimes it will disconnect if it's taking a little bit of time. Perfect, still connected. All right, so he's gonna hone in. He's gonna brace huh. if he needs Come to. On. He's gonna hype himself up. Woo! And we're gonna go for the last round here. In three, two, and go. Pull, 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 pull. Drive, 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 drive. Oh. And rest. Yeah. Very nice. All right. 57.9, so again, 90 degrees oh. is always going to be lower than that 60 degree mark. Your job is to just make sure you're being reliable, accurate, and hyping them up every step of the way. Hey, prehabbers, thank you for joining me and Mike for our tin deck testing today. So hopefully, whether you are a patient recovering from a lower leg injury or you know an ACL injury or anything in the knee, 
or you're a clinician who's trying to include more objective data and testing procedures into your regular testing and your setup at work. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot. And I hope more importantly, you walk away feeling a little bit or maybe a lot of bit more empowered to include this and put that old manual muscle test to rest. If you guys wanna see other muscle groups being tested or you have your own setup you wanna share, let us know, drop it in the comments and we'll see you guys next time. Hey prehabbers, if you enjoyed our content, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Or better yet, head over to our website in the description below and check out the dozens of programs that we've created to help you take control of your health today. Yeah. <laughs>